Dhananath. Good morning, everyone. I won. My name is Dhananath. I am representing Advocata Institute. I am the CEO. I first of all warmly welcome all our media representatives and fellow journalists. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Mang muli mustuti vanta ve noa. Ape madhya sahurde ante. Ape aradhane piliyara ke na me madhya saakacha vada sammandhi magena. Me Mai madhya hamu sangvidhane karane Advocata aythane visin. Ape visheshe ma me madhya hamu kandavan na tirane kare. රජයට අයිති ව්‍යාපාරවල ප්‍රතිවිරුද්ධ කිරීම පිළිබඳව අදහස් පළ කරන්න මේ ඇඩ්වොකට් ආයතනය ඇත්තටම රජයට අයිති ව්‍යාපාර පිළිබඳව අදහස් පළ කරන්න පටන් ගත්තේ 2016 අවුරුද්දේ ඇත්තටම අපේ ආයතනය පටන් ගන්න දවසින් දමලම අපි මේ ගැන සාකච්ඡා කරා ඒ ගැන සියලුම වාර්තා ඔබට soe.lk soe.lk කියන වෙබ් අඩවිය හරහා අපි මෙතරම් මෙතෙක් කල් පළ කරපු වාර්තා හතරකට වැඩි සංඛ්‍යාවක් ඒ හරහා ඔබට ඩවුන්ලෝඩ් කරගන්න පුළුවන් සහ අපි පළ කරපු අදහස් දැක ගන්න පුළුවන් නමුත් මේ අවස්ථාවේදී මේ රජයට අයිති ව්‍යාපාර ප්‍රති සංවිධානය ගැන නැවත සමාජයේ සාකච්ඡාවක් අවශ්‍ය සහ ඒ පිළිබඳව තියෙන සමහර කරුණු පිළිබඳව දැනුවත් කරන්න තමයි අපි ආරාධනා කරේ මම නැවත වරක් ඔබට ඉතාමත්ම ගෞරවයෙන් ස්තුතිවන්ත වෙනවා අපේ ආරාධනය පිළි අරගෙන මෙම ස්ථානයට පැමිණීම ගැන අද මාධ්‍ය සාකච්ඡාවට අපිත් එක්ක සම්බන්ධ වෙනවා රෙහානා තෞෆික් ඇය ඇඩ්වොකාට ඇතනේ ජ්‍යේෂ්ඨ රිසර්ච් ඇසෝසියේට් කෙනෙක් ඒ වගේම මහාචාර්ය රොහාන් සමරජීව එතුමා ලර්න් ඒෂියා ආයතනයේ සමාරම්භක සභාපති ඒ වගේම ඇඩ්වොකාට ආයතනයේ උපදේශකවරයෙක් විදියට කටයුතු කරනවා ඒ වගේම අපිත් එක්ක ඉන්නවා රවි රත්න සභාපති එතුමා ස්වාධීන ඇනලිස්ට් කෙනෙක් විදියට කටයුතු කරනවා ඊට අමතරව මම සහභාගී වෙනවා ඇඩ්වොකාට් ආයතනයේ ප්‍රධාන මෙහෙයුම් නිලධාරී විදියට මාධ්‍ය සාකච්ඡාවේ ආකෘතිය තමයි මුලින්ම රෙහානා ඇත්තටම අපිට අදහස් ස්ලයිඩ් කිහිපයක් ඉදිරිපත් කරයි මේ රජයට අයිති ව්‍යාපාර මොන මට්ටමේද තියෙන්නේ ඇයි මේ රජයට අයිති ව්‍යාපාර ප්‍රතිවිහුගත කිරීම ඉක්මන් වෙන්න ඕනේ සහ ඒ පිළිබඳව දත්ත සහ තොරතුරු ඒ ප්‍රෙසෙන්ටේෂන් එක අපිට ඔබට ලබා දෙන්න පුළුවන් ඊට පස්සේ ප්‍රොෆෙසර් සමරජීව අදහස් පළ කරයි ඊට පස්සේ මම අදහස් පළ කරනවා ඊට පස්සේ රවි අදහස් පළ කරයි ඊට පස්සේ ඔබට තිබෙන ප්‍රශ්න සඳහා අවස්ථාව තියෙනවා ඒ ප්‍රශ්න වලට පිළිතුරු ලබා දෙන්න අපි බලාපොරොත්තු වෙනවා මම නැවතත් සූතිවන්ත වෙනවා ඕගොල්ලෝ හැම දෙනාටම අපේ ආරාධනය පිළි අරගෙන ආවට මං ගෞරවයෙන් ආරාධනා කරනවා රෙහානට මෙතෙක් ඉඳන් ඇයගේ ඉදිරිපත් කිරීම ඉදිරිපත් කරන්න කියලා අපිට සිංහල සහ ඉංග්‍රීසි මාධ්‍ය දෙකෙන්ම අදහස් දක්වන්න පුළුවන් ද්‍රවිඩ මාධ්‍ය නවාසනාවකට වගේ අපි ඉච්චරම හුරු නෑ ඒ මාධ්‍යට නමුත් ඕනම ප්‍රශ්න කරලා අපිට සිංහල සහ ඉංග්‍රීසි මාධ්‍ය වලින් පිළිතුරු ලබා දීමේ හැකියාව තියෙනවා රෙහානා ඕ ටියු Good morning everyone. My name is Rehana Taufik uh, and I will be presenting the findings of Advocata's research on state-owned enterprises which uh, have been many years in the making. Uh, so first I will walk you through the fiscal and governance landscape in which uh, Sri Lankan SOEs operate, their financial and governance performance and then talk a little bit about the way forward for reforms. So as we all know Sri Lanka's economic troubles stem from the government's budget deficit. and SOEs are a fundamental part of this problem. SOE losses have snowballed into 1.8 trillion rupees and they have accumulated debt of 1.5 trillion rupees. By larger macroeconomic reforms like debt restructuring and expenditure rationalization are essential, they will take time. Therefore, reforming SOEs are an important avenue to reduce fiscal deficits as well as to boost government revenues. At the time of writing of our 2022 reports on SOEs, there were 527 state-owned enterprises existing in Sri Lanka. Out of these 527, 287 of them are monitored by the Department of Public Enterprises, while the rest are monitored by the Department of National Budget. Both of these departments come under the Finance Ministry. and these 527 SOEs are governed by one of two acts the finance act number no. 38 of 1971 and the companies act number no. 7 of 2007 now the dominant issue is with respect to the operational and financial underperformance of these SOEs and it's not like this issue of underperformance is a hidden issue either even the department of public enterprises which oversees 287 of these soes has acknowledged this in its annual reports as you can see from the quote which we have extracted 
The root problem with SOEs are its conflicting objectives, stemming from the lack of clearly defined ownership and responsibilities for each stakeholder. It is a classic principal-agent problem, where the interests of principals, in this case the public, differ from the interests of the agents, in this case the government and the managers of the SOE. Therefore, SOEs operate in the best interests of the agents who dole out public employment opportunities, abuse resources for election purposes, and use SOEs as an outlet for political patronage. This ends up resulting in highly undesirable outcomes with respect to efficiency and profitability. Compounding this operational inefficiency which stems from the conflicting interests are soft budget constraints. Soft budget constraint measures the willingness of the government to intervene and bail out loss-making SOEs. The absence of commitment to fiscal discipline and the degree of willingness to impose budget restraints on SOEs il is illustrated by the complete disregard for fiscal rules set in place by laws such as the Fiscal Management Responsibility Act, which places a ceiling on the budget deficit and the government borrowing that can be incurred. The government of Sri Lanka regularly circumvents these legislative limits through parliament and SOEs have benefited from these loose restraints. The FMRA originally set out a limit of 4.5% of GDP on the amount of government guarantees that can be incurred on SOE liabilities. This limit has been raised three times already and in 2021 this limit was further extended to 15%, more than thrice the original level. The government also routinely provides letters of comfort or treasury guarantees for SOEs. As a result, these loss-making SOEs have accumulated billions in publicly guaranteed debt. Moreover, other than for public listed entities, there is no mandate to publicly disclose audited financial and performance reports, which means that the principals, in this case the people of Sri Lanka, don't even know the extent to which these SOEs are failing at. Thirdly, in order to serve the government's social objectives of providing goods and services at low cost to the general public, price controls on essential commodities are a policy that all successive governments of Sri Lanka have pursued. SOEs and private competitors are forced to sell these items at control prices, even if they do not cover the production, import and distribution costs. These controls have inevitably led to supply shortages and surpluses, leading to losses which are ultimately borne by the central government through subsidies or direct budget allocations, financed largely by debt. In some instances, particularly with regard to energy prices, that's electricity and fuel, these price controls fail to also address the core issue of income inequality altogether. When price controls are imposed on utilities like fuel and electricity, which are disproportionately consumed by higher income groups, much of the government's subsidy is funneled to higher income households, making these price controls and subsidies both regressive and ineffective. The social costs of SOE misgovernance and corruption are illustrated well in the currently unfolding events with respect to medicines provided in state hospitals. Recent investigations have revealed the malpractices at the health ministry, which have led to substandard life-saving drugs being imported from unregistered foreign companies and being administered to patients endangering their lives. Previous scope investigations into the State Pharmaceutical Corporation have also revealed similar issues with respect to the quality of drugs. Despite these serious allegations, however, a no-confidence motion brought out to oust the health minister in charge has been defeated perfectly illustrating the conflict of interest we discussed before. Therefore, the reality of the state in which SO is operating in Sri Lanka is such that while marketed as national assets, which will provide equitable services at a lower cost, SOEs actually end up being vehicles for corruption, designed to benefit politicians and their allies, racking up huge and hidden debt which become a massive burden to the general public. Assessing the performance of all of these SOEs is an extremely difficult task, mostly due to the lack of information on financials and performance. 
But given that 920 billion rupees was channeled to SOEs by the banking sector, and that 75 billion rupees in treasury support was granted to these SOEs, it is the right of the people to know how these funds are utilized. Therefore, Advocata devised a scorecard method to assess the financial and governance performance of SOEs. You can find detailed information on each SOE on the website linked here. We find that overall, 13 SOEs out of these 52 are a total failure on both the fiscal and governance sides, and notable SOEs like the CEB and CPC are in this lot. We were also able to assess the return on assets of these 52 SOEs. As you can see, some of the very prominent SOEs like the CEB, CPC and Sri Lankan Airlines have a return on assets very much in the red and they are failing miserably. Others like the Bank of Ceylon and People's Bank, although marginally successful, generate a return on assets below the average effective interest rate. So very few SOEs actually perform on par with private competitors and regional counterparts. And this brings us to the next question. How do we improve the performance of SOEs? Now, SOEs are not a Sri Lankan phenomenon. There are thousands of SOEs around the world, especially in emerging economies. So international best practices for corporate governance of SOEs are well documented. The OECD, for instance, has mapped out seven guidelines on corporate governance for SOEs. And these are followed by 38 OECD members, as well as three partner countries. It states that the state ought to have a clear rationale for ownership, with clear policies on the state's role in the operation and governance of the SOE, as well as the roles and responsibility of each stakeholder involved. The state is expected to act as an informed and active owner while following while allowing full operational autonomy to the SOE board and its managers. SOE objectives should be clearly defined, the legal, regulatory and institutional framework within which SOEs operate should ensure a level playing field and fair competition in the market. All SOEs should be subject to the same standards of disclosure as publicly listed companies and audit requirements. And SOE board members should be nominated based on merit and be free of any conflicts of interest. One of the most touted models for reforming Sri Lanka's SOEs is the Temasek model. Temasek is a publicly owned holding company which manages the Singaporean government's commercial assets and state-owned enterprises. Since its inception, Temasek's compounded growth rate is at 14%. The company holds investments across Asia. Temasek sits apart from other sovereign wealth funds as it is entirely self-financed through dividends, divestment proceeds, investment earnings, and long and short-term debt. While the Temasek model is not a one-stop fix for the problems of all Sri Lankan SOEs, some of which ne need to be outright divested or shut down, a holding company model is a suitable alternative for those which cannot be immediately divested or those that present a strong rationale for government ownership. The two key principles that set Temasek up for success are the Singapore government's non-intervention and non-preference principles. Temasek Holdings was created in 1974 in accordance with the idea that the government should not be involved in the management of businesses and that government and civil servants should focus on policy. The success of the Temasek model can be attributed to its compliance in most cases to the tenets of good, good corporate governance, having clearly defined ownership roles for the state as an owner having objectives for SOEs and clearly defined responsibilities for the boards and managers of SOEs. Government-linked companies or GLCs are expected to compete on a level playing field. As a result, all GLCs are publicly listed and are subject to the rigors of market competition. The government does not play an active role in the daily operations of the holding company or its SOEs. So the way we see it, the way forward is quite clear. 
The losses accumulated by Sri Lankan SOEs are a source of macroeconomic instability for our economy. Urgent reform is needed for several large SOEs like the CEB, CPC and Sri Lankan Airlines. Allowing these entities to continue to operate without reform will lead to an increased debt burden on the people of Sri Lanka. SOE reform should lead to improved productivity and reduce budget deficits. Reforms are feared by various factions of society as they are viewed as upsetting the apple cart, so to say. SOE's reforms need to be properly sequenced along with wide, wider economic reforms to improve export orientation and private sector growth. On an immediate and high priority basis, measures must be taken to divest ownership of viable SOE's which have ready buyers. Passing the SOE law to make way for these transactions should be expedited. And divestment can take place through full of partial privatization and through listing entities on the stock exchange. SOEs which cannot be divested but continue to accumulate large losses should be shut down or downsized to prevent the buildup of larger losses. For SOEs which have a strong rationale for government ownership, and those which cannot be sold off or shut down, a Temasek style holding company can be established to manage them. In addition to enforcing fiscal governance on these holding company and its subsidiaries, measures must be taken to improve and bring the levels of corporate governance up to an acceptable international level. Subjecting SOEs to the forces of competition through privatization and liberalization are an essential part of these reforms underscoring the importance of non-preference. Further to these proposed uh, reforms, Advocata also proposes critically evaluating the need for government intervention in SOEs. The need for robust independent institutions are a notable commonality in the lead up to and unfolding of Sri Lanka's economic crisis. Institutions that function independently without political intervention and undue influence are vital for ensuring long-term, inclusive and sustainable economic growth. So the way forward for Sri Lankan SOEs is quite clear. That brings me uh, to an end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Rehana. Thank you very much. विवाद <laughs> නමුත් යම් ප්‍රමාණයකට වෘත්තීය සමිති යම් ප්‍රමාණයකට වෘත්තීය සමිති වගේ ආයතන කියනවා නෑ නෑ අපි ලාභ ලබනවා කියලා අපි පාඩු ලබන අය නෙමෙයි අපි ලාභ ලබන ආයතන කියලා එතකොට ඒක දිහා බලන ක්‍රම තියෙනවා දෙකක් එකක් තමයි අර මේ වාර්තා විදින ආකාරයට රිටර්න් ඔන් ඇසට්ස් संसंधनात्मक हो एक करलती ना आयोजने टे सापेक्ष हो ये सेसंधीय है कि अनिता ये तनत समक संसंधने कर रहा हूँ सुधुसु प्रतिलाभ्यक लेबिनो आदे ये करपु आयोजने टे किन्ह प्रश्ने ना ये वितरकुत निमे में आयतन दंग ये प्रश्ने क्या ना में वार्ता वितीन हो एक ना वो ना प्रश्न क्या हुत ने उत्तर दे इतनती न विदुली बाले मंडले पाडुला बन्ने गुलांगे मुका को विशेष आकार पक्षम ताये टेबली ये गुलांटे मिले बैठी कराने मिला ये गुलांगे इनपुट्स वाले ये गुलांग पाविचिकरने तेलवल ढारी आंडे मिले बैठी कराने देने नहीं थी निसाती ये वाके देवला अपने वेनवा कथा कराने पुलो उन में तो ना तीनों वेनत प्रश्न है एक देंगे उदाहरण एक हटिए टे विविध आउर्दु वाला विविध विधि हटे नाया सहार नाया टे गेबी ना पुलिया वार्ता करना दें मामे एक उदाहरण या दुन्नुत समारक आउर आउर्दु वाला जाति के जाला 
සම්පාදන සහ NWSTB කියන ආයතනයේ ජල මණ්ඩලය ඒගොල්ලෝ කියනවා අපි ලාභ ලැබුවා කියලා. නමුත් ගිහිල්ලා ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ ගණන් හිලව් දිහා ගැඹුරු ලෙස බැලුවොත් පේනවා ඒගොල්ලෝ ගත්ත ණය වලට පොලියට ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ මේගොල්ලන්ගේ ගිනුම් වල මුකුත් වෙන් කරලා නැහැ. ඒ කියන්නේ ඒක මහ භාණ්ඩාගාරයෙන් පියවලා තියෙනවා. ඉතින් ඒක ඒක සාමාන්‍යයෙන් ලෝකේ කොහෙවත් කෙරෙන්නේ නැති දෙයක්. ඒ කියන්නේ මහ භාණ්ඩාගාරයේ තියෙනවා මේ යම්කිසි යම්කිසි සූත්‍ර තියෙනවා ඔය කිඩ්නි ප්‍රශ්නය නිසා මේ මේ කිඩ්නි රෝගය නිසා බලපාන ප්‍රදේශවල ජල ව්‍යාපෘති වලට සියට සීයක්ම ආණ්ඩුවෙන් දෙනවා කියලා කියලා තියෙනවා තව හොමෝම සියට පනහයි සියට හැත්ත පහයි කියලා තියෙනවා ඒවා පැත්තකින් තියන්න ඒත් ඒ ඇරෙන්ඩ මේගොල්ලෝ ගන්නවා ලංකාවේ වාණිජ්‍ය බැංකු වලින් පිටරට වාණිජ්‍ය බැංකු වලින් නය අරන් තියෙනවා නමුත් ඒ නයට ගෙවන පොලිය මේගොල්ලන්ගේ ගණන් හිලව් වල එක එක අවුරුදු වල එක එක විදිහට පෙන්නන්න ඒතර ඒක දිහා බැලුවම අපිට පේනවා මේ ලාභ ලැබනවායි කියලා කියන කට්ටියගේ ලාභ සමහර වෙලාවට සත්‍ය ලාභ නෙමෙයි ඒක ඒක එක ප්‍රශ්නයක් ඒ වගේම මේ ආයතන වල තියෙනවා යම් කිසි සංස්කෘතියක් තියෙනවා ඒ තමයි ඒ සංස්කෘතිය මම මේ කියූ සියලු කරුණු වලට අමතරව තව එක කරුණක් මම කියන්නේ ලංකාවේ වේගවත් ආර්ථික වර්ධනයක් ඇති වෙන්න නම් අපි මේ අර්බුදයෙන් එළියට එන්න ඕනේ නම් මේ පිටරට යන අපේ තරුණ පරම්පරාවට ලංකාවට ලංකාවේ ඉන්ඩ හේතුවක් දෙන්න ඕනේ නම් අපිට සිද්ධ වෙනවා යම්කිසි සීග්‍ර ආර්ථික වර්ධනයක් ගන්නට ඒ වගේම අපේ රජයේ සේවා රජය විසින් සපයන සේවා අත්‍යවශ්‍ය සේවා වඩා කාර්යක්ෂම කරන්න මේ සියලුම දේවල් වලට සැලකිය යුතු ආයෝජනය අවශ්‍යයි මම උදාහරණ දෙකක් විතරක් දෙන්න පළවෙනි උදාහරණය තමයි අපි කාගෙත් ලුකු උනන්දුවක් තියෙනවා සුලං බලය සූර්ය බලය වගේ දේවල් තව දුරටත් ලංකාවේ අපේ විදුලි පද්ධතියට පාවිච්චි කරන්න කියලා ඒකට විවිධ හේතු උන්න උඩ අපි කියනවා හරි ඒවා අපි කරොත් අපිට පිටරටට මේ තෙල් වලට ගෙවන මුදල් ගෙවන්න වෙන්නේ නැහැ අපි ඒවා කරොත් අපේ දේශගුණික විපාර්ය යාසයට කාලගුණ විපර්යාසයට අපි යම් කිසි උදව්වක් වෙනවා යනාදි කරුණු ගණනාවක් කුඩා අපි ඒකට ඒකට කැමතියි මං හිතන්නේ කවුරුත් නෑ ලංකාවේ විරුද්ධ සුලං බලය ඒ පුනර්ජනනීය බලය පාවිච්චි කරනවාට නමුත් මේකේ පූර්ව කොන්දේශයක් තමයි අපේ ඒ සම්ප්‍රේෂණ ජාලයට විශාල ආයෝජනයක් කළ යුතුයි දැන් ඔය ආයෝජන කරන්න මේ තියෙන ආයතන වල ඇත්තවශ්‍යම හැකියාවක් නැහැ මොකද තියෙන සේසත හූරලා කරන්නේ සේවකයන්ට දෙන එක තමයි මේ ආයතන වල ප්‍රධාන කාර්යය එතකොට ආයෝජන කරන්න කියලා ගුහම ඒගොල්ලෝ කියනවා ආහා අපි ඔය විදේශ විදේශ ආයෝජන වල විතරයි කරන්නේ අපේ අපේ ආදායමෙන් අපි කිසිම ආයෝජනයක් කරන්නේ නැහැ එතකොට මේ හැම ආයතනයේම වගේ දැන් ජල මණ්ඩලයේ ගත්තත් ඕකයි තියෙන්නේ ජල මණ්ඩලයේ ඔක්කොම කරන්නේ ප්‍රොජෙක්ට්ස් වලින් විතරයි අලුත් අලුත් ආයෝජන කරන්නේ එතකොට මේ තියෙන තියෙන සංස්කෘතිය ඇතුළු තියෙන්නේ සේවකයන්ට සියල්ල බාර දෙනවා ආයෝජන වලට සේවා තත්ව ඉහළ නැංවීමට දියුණු කිරීමට මුදල් නැහැ දැන් මම හිතන්නේ ඔබතුමන්ලා අහලා ඇති මේ දවස්වල ශ්‍රී ලංකන් එයාලයින්ස් එකේ කියනවා මේ අපි ලාභයි කියලා ඒගොල්ලෝ ඔපරේෂනලි ලාභ ලබනවා කියලා කියනවා නමුත් ශ්‍රී ලංකන් එකේ යන අයට තේරෙනවා දැන් මොකද මේකට වෙලා තියෙන්නේ කියලා මොකද ඇති වෙන්න ගුවන් යානා නැහැ ඒවට අවශ්‍ය පහසුකම් නැහැ ඒ තත්වයන් යටතේ අද ෆ්ලයිට්ස් පරක් වෙලා තියෙනවා දැන් මට මේ ළඟදී ගමනක් යන්න තියෙනවා මම අර ඉස්සර දෙදාස් ගණන් වල ඔය පුද්ගල අමිරේච් එකට දෙන්න කලින් තිබ්බ කාලේ වගේ ඒ කියන්නේ මට මොකද මේ අවිනිශ්චිතාවය දරා ගන්න මට තියෙන එකම ක්‍රමය ඒකයි හරි එතකොට ඒකේ තියෙන ඒක දිහා බැලුවමත් පේන්නේ මේ ආයෝජනය ගැන මේ කිසිම සාකච්ඡාවක ඇති වෙන්න සංවේදීතාවයක් නැහැ මේ ආයතන පවත්වාගෙන යන්න නම් ආයෝජනය කරන්න ඕනේ ආයෝජනය කරන්න නම් ඒ ආයෝජනයට සරිලන ප්‍රතිලාභයක් ඒ කියන්නේ ඒ ණය ගෙවා ගන්න පුළුවන් ණය හෝ ආයෝජන ගෙවා ගන්න පුළුවන් තත්වයක් ඇති කරගන්න ඕනේ ඉතින් ඒ කරුණ මං හිතන්නේ අපි තව වැඩිපුර අවධාරණය කළ යුතුයි දෙවෙනි කරුණ තමයි මේ 
ඊට අදාළම කරුණක් මම ශ්‍රී ලංකන් එකේ උදාහරණයෙන් ගත්තේ ගත්තාම මේ ප්‍රතිසංස්කරණ කරනකොට අපි අවිනිශ්චිතතාවය කියලා සාධකයක් තියෙනවා අවිනිශ්චිතතාවය අවිනිශ්චිතතාවය ඉතා ඉහළ මට්ටමක තියෙනකොට ආයෝජන සිද්ධ වෙන්නේ නැහැ ඒ කියන්නේ මූලික ආයෝජන සිද්ධ වෙන්නේ නැහැ ප්‍රාග්ධන ආයෝජන සිද්ධ වෙන්නේ නැහැ ඒ වගේම පුද්ගලයන්ගේ අර කැපවීම ඒ අයගේ රැකියා වලට තියෙන උනන්දුව ඒ අය රැකියා වල ඉන්නවද නැද්ද කියන එක ඒ සියලුම දේවල් ඒක ආයෝජනයක් හැටියට නිකන් හිතා ගන්න පුළුවන් ඒක ආයෝජන එක ස්වරූපයක් ගන්නවා කියලා ඒ ඔක්කොම අඩාල වෙනවා අවිනිශ්චිතතාවයේ ඉතා ඉහළ තත්වයක තියෙනකොට දැන් බැලුවොත් ශ්‍රී ලංකන් ගුවන් සේවය ගත්තාම දැන් අවුරුදු එක හමාරක් දෙකක් විතර කාලයක් තිස්සේ ඒගොල්ලෝ ඉන්නේ සම්පූර්ණයෙන් ගන්ධබ්බ තත්වයේ අවිනිශ්චිත තත්වයේ එහෙටත් නෑ මෙහෙටත් නෑ පුද්ගලීකරණය කරනවාද නැද්ද කොයි ආකාරයට පුද්ගලීකරණය වෙයිද කතා කරනවා ලයිෆ් තුළ දානවා නමුත් පුද්ගලීකරණය වෙලා නෑ මේ තත්වය යටතේ මේකට ආයෝජන එන්නේ නෑ ඒක ඉතින් අපි දන්නවා නේ මේක ආණ්ඩුවේ ආයතනය ආයෝජන කරන්න හැකියාවක් නෑ නමුත් පුද්ගලයන්ගේ පැත්තෙන් තමන්ගේ තමන්ගේ රැකියාව තමන්ගේ අනාගතය පැත්තෙන් බලන කොට එයා කියනවා මට මේකේ අවිනිශ්චිතාවය දරා ගන්න බෑ ඒ නිසා මම ගිහිල්ලා වෙනකො හරි යනවා ඊට අඩු පඩු පඩියකට හෝ මම යනවා මම මේකේ ඉන්න නම් මට යම් කිසි නිශ්චිත භාවයක් දෙන්න ඕනේ එතනදි අපිට එනවා මෙන්න මේ ආණ්ඩුවේ ක්‍රියාපිළිවෙතේ ප්‍රශ්නය ඉස්සරහට එනවා ඒ ක්‍රියාපිළිවෙතේ ප්‍රශ්නය මෙන්න මේ ආකාරයට තමයි එන්නේ ඒ කියන්නේ ගිය අවුරුද්දේ අතුරු අයවැය අගෝස්තු මාසේ අතුරු අයවැයේ ආයතන නම් කරලා නම් ලයිස්තුවක් දීලා මේවා ප්‍රතිවිවේකත කරනවා කියලා කිව්වා එතකොට දැන් මාස දාහතරක් ගිහිල්ලා තියෙනවා මේ මාස දාහතරේ මොනවද වෙලා තියෙන ඒ ඒ ලයිස්තුව දිගට යන්න හිල්ටන් හෝටලේ ලංකා හොස්පිටල්ස් ශ්‍රී ලංකා ටෙලිකෝම් ශ්‍රී ලංකන් එයාර්ලයින්ස් ඉන්ෂුරන්ස් කෝපරේෂන් එක ඔහොම යන්න එකක් එකක මොකක් හෝ වෙනසක් වෙලා තියෙනවාද මොකක් හෝ වෙනසක් මොකක් හෝ ප්‍රතිවිරුද්ධ ගත කිරීමක් වෙලා තියෙනවා දැන් ඒක සංසන්දනය කරන්න ඛනිජ තෙල් බෙදා හැරීමේ ව්‍යාපාරය සිපෙට්කෝ එක තමයි එහෙම තමයි නමුත් අඩු ගාන මොන හරි වෙලා තියෙනවා ගිහිල්ලා සයින් උපෙක් කියලා මේ ෂෙඩ් එකින් තෙල් ටිකක් ගහ ගන්න හැකියාව තියෙනවා මොකක් හෝ වෙනසක් වෙලා තියෙනවා මේකේ කිසිම දෙයක් වෙලා නැහැ මේ මාස දාහතර හැබැයි වෙනවා කියන බලාපොරොත්තුව සහ හැඟීම තියෙනවා මේ අවිනිශ්චිතතාවය යටතේ තමයි මේ සීලුව දෙන ජීවත් වෙන්නේ මේ අවිනිශ්චිතතාවය ඉතාම භයානක දෙයක් ඇත්තටම ඒක ඒක ඒකෙම්ම කටයුතු අඩාල වෙනවා අර මම පෙන්නුවා වගේ ශ්‍රී ලංකන් එයාලයින් එකට දැන් වෙලා තියෙන හානිය වෙන්නේ අවිනිශ්චිතතාවය තුළින් ඒ කියන්නේ මොන පැත්තකට හරි තීරණයක් ගැනීම තුළින් දැන් අපි මේක සංසන්දනය කරලා බැලුවොත් දෙදාස් එකේ නොවැම්බර් මාසේ අලුත් ආණ්ඩුවක් පත් වෙනවා රට ඍණ ආර්ථික වර්ධනයකට ගිහිල්ලා කටුනායකයේ අපෝට්ටයට බොම්බ ගහලා අපේ ඉන්ෂුරන්ස් ප්‍රීමියම් වැඩි කරලා නිකන් රට නිකන් අපි ඒ දවසල යුතුවා මෙහෙම අර්බුදයක් අපි දැකල නැහැ කියලා දැන් අපි ඊට වැඩි අර්බුද දැකලා තියෙනවා නමුත් එදා අපි හිතුවා මේක මහා ලොකු අර්බුදයක් කියලා එහෙම අර්බුදයක් වෙලත් අපි ශ්‍රී ලංකන් ශ්‍රී ලංකා ටෙලිකෝම් සමාගම සියට හැට හතරක් විතර තිබ්බ රජයේ අයිතිය සියට හතලිස් නමයට බැස්සුවා දෙසැම්බර් මාස වෙනකොට දෙදාස් දෙකේ ඒ කියන්නේ මාස දහතුනක කාලයක් ඇතුළත ඒක කරන්න කලින් තිබ්බ ලොකු අවිනිශ්චිත භාවයක් මම මේ අවිනිශ්චිතාවය තේමාවට අපහු අපහු එන්නේ ඒක වැදගත් නිසා ඒකට තිබ්බ ලොකු අවිනිශ්චිතාවයේ ප්‍රශ්නයක් තිබ්බ ජපන් සමාගමත් එක්ක පුද්ගලීකරණ ගිවිසුම අස්සංකරණ වෙලාවේ අනු හතේ දීලා තිබ්බ අවුරුදු පහක ඒකාධිකාරයක් කියලා කියමුකෝ ඒකාධිකාරයක් දීලා තිබ්බ ජාත්‍යන්තර ඇමතුම් සම්බන්ධව එතකොට ඒක ඉවර වෙන්නේ දෙදාස් දෙකේ අගෝස්තු මාසේ අපි අර කොටස් වෙළඳ පොළට ගිහිල්ලා ඒකේ අය ලව්වා මේකේ කොටස් මිලදී ගැනීමේ කටයුතු කරන්න ඒක දෙපාරක් කරන්න ගිහිල්ලා අසාර්ථක වෙලා තිබ්බා මේ තුන්වෙනි පාර ගිහිල්ලා කරන්න හිටියේ දෙසැම්බර මාසේ 
දැන් මේ අවිනිශ්ච මෙතන මේක තව දුරටත් දික් කරනවද මේක අහෝසි කරනවද කියන ප්‍රශ්නයට පැහැදිලි උත්තරය දිය යුතුව තිබුණා දුන්නේ නැත්තම් තියෙන්නේ අවිනිශ්චිතතාවය අවිනිශ්චිතතාවයේ යටතේ අර IPO එක සාර්ථක වෙන්න වෙන්නේ නැහැ කියන එක තමයි අපේ නිගමනයේ උනේ එතකොට මගේ වගකීම වෙලා තිබ්බේ ඒ වෙලාවේ මම රජයේ වැඩ කරේ මගේ වගකීම වෙලා තිබ්බේ අර ජාත්‍යන්තර ඇමතුම් පිළිබඳ ඒකාධිකාරය ගැන මොකද කරන්නේ ඉතින් මම පරේ මේ දුවලා මොන හරි කරලා අපි ප්‍රකාශයක් නිකුත් කරා අපිට ඒ සියලුම කටයුතු ඉවර කරන්න බැරුවා නා අපි නිශ්චිත ප්‍රසාරය දින වකවානු කාල සීමා ඔක්කොමත් එක්ක අපි දුන්නා අගෝස්තු මාසේ මේක තව දුරට දික් කරන්නේ නැහැ මේ මේ ආකාරයට මේ මේ විදිහට මේ ඒකාධිකාරය අහවරක් කරනවා මේ විදිහට අලුත් බලපත්‍ර දෙනවා කියලා පැහැදිලි ප්‍රකාශනයක් අපි නිකුත් කරා ඒක හුගක් අය සමහරු කිව්වා ඕ ඕක කරලා හරියන්නේ නැහැ දැන් මේ IPO එක අසාර්ථක වෙනවා නෑ ඒ වුණාට අපි කරේ අවිනිශ්චිතතාවය අයින් කරා අවිනිශ්චිතතාවය අයින් කරලා IPO එක සාර්ථක කරගත්තා ඊට පස්සේ මාර්තු මාසේ වෙනකොට 2022 මාර්තු වෙනකොට නිසි ක්‍රමවේදයන් පාවිච්චි කරලා අපි අර ඒකාධිකාරය හොසි වෙන විදිහට අලුත් බලපත්‍ර නිකුත් කරා රුපියල් 80ට තිබුණු ඇමතුමක් විනාඩියකට මේක දැන් කාලේ ආයෙත් හිතන්නත් බෑ ඒ දවස්වල විදේශ ඇමතුමට රුපියල් 80ක් ගෙවන්න තිබ්බා ඒක විනාඩියකට ඒක එක දවසෙන් රුපියල් 12ට ආවා දැන් ඉතින් අවුරුදු කතා කරන්නේ නැහැ රුපියල් 12කවත් ගෙවන එක ගැන කතා කරන්නේ නැහැ ඒක ඊට පස්සේ 12න් පල්ලියට ඔහොම ඔහොම ආවා හරි ඒතර ඔන්න ඕක තමයි අවිනිශ්චිතතාවයට මූණ දෙන ක්‍රම මට අවසන් වශයෙන් කියන්න තියෙන්නේ මේ සියලුම දේවල් කරන්න අවශ්‍ය මූලික ආණ්ඩුවට මේ දේවල් ඉක්මනට කරන්න බැරි වීම ගැන මට තේරෙනවා මේ යම්කිසි අත්දැකීම් තියෙන පුද්ගලයෙක් හැටියට මට මතකයන් තියෙන පුද්ගලයෙක් හැටියට මට තේරෙනවා මේකට හේතුව මොකද්ද කියලා ඒ දවස්වල පර්ක් කියලා ආයතනයක් තිබ්බා පබ්ලික් එන්ටර්ප්‍රයිස් රිෆෝම් කමිෂන් කියලා ආයතනයක් තිබ්බා අර මේ වර්ල්ඩ් ට්‍රේඩ් සෙන්ටර් එකේ තට්ටු දෙකක විතර ඔෆිස් ඔෆිස් තියාගෙන සාමාන්‍යයෙන් හොඳ අධ්‍යාපනයක් තියෙන උගත් දැනුම තේරුම තියෙන නිලධාරීන් එක්ක ඒගොල්ලෝ තමයි මේ පුද්ගලීකරණ වැඩ කරේ දැන් ඒ පුද්ගලීකරණය කරන්න ඒක දෙදාස් හතේ වහල දැම්මා ඒ විතරක් නෙමෙයි ඒ දවස්වල තිබ්බා බෝඩ් ඔෆ් ඉන්ෆ්‍රාස්ට්‍රක්චර් ඉන්වෙස්ට්මන්ට් කියලා ආයතනයක් ඒකත් වහල දැම්මා ඒ කියන්නේ විශේෂ මේ ඉන්ෆ්‍රාස්ට්‍රක්චර් යටි දල පහසුකම් ගැන ඒ ඒ ආයතනයේ තමයි අර එස් ඒ ජී ටී පර්යන්තය බැහැලුම් පර්යන්තයේ ගනු දෙනුව ට වගකීම් බාර ගත්තේ ඒගොල්ලෝ ඒකත් වහලා දැම්මා දෙදාස් හතේ මහින්ද රාජවක්ස මහත්මයාගේ ආණ්ඩුව යටතේ නැෂනල් ප්‍රොකියුමන්ට් ඒජන්සි කියලා එකක් තිබ්බා ඒකත් වහලා දැම්මා ඒ කියන්නේ ආණ්ඩුවට ප්‍රතිසංස්කරණ කිරීමේ හැකියාව යන්තම් හරි තියෙනවා නම් ඒව වහලා දානවා දෙදාස් හතේ වහලා දැම්මා ඊළඟට පබ්ලික් ප්‍රයිවට් පාට්නර්ෂිප්ස් කියන වර්ගය ගැන හුගාක් අය දැන් කතා කරනවා දැන් අපි කතා නොකර බෑ මොකද ආණ්ඩුවට සල්ලි නැති නිසා ඊළඟට ආණ්ඩුවට ණය ගන්න බැරි නිසා ඉතින් තියෙන්නේ ප්‍රබ්ලික් ප්‍රයිවට් පාට්නර්ෂිප් විතරයි දැන් තියෙන්නේ ඒකට වෙනම ඒජන්සියක් හැදුවා දෙදාස් දහතේ දහටේ වගේ කාලේ ඒකත් වහලා දැම්මා දෙදාස් දහනමේ අලුත් ආණ්ඩුව අපි හැටි මේ එකත් වහලා දැම්මා ඉතින් ඔය විදිහට මේ තියෙන යම්කිසි හැකියාවන් තියෙන ඒ ශක්‍යතාවයන් තියෙන ගැටියක් ඉන්නවා නම් ඒ ආයතනයක් තියෙනවා නම් ඒක වහලා දැම්මා ඊට පස්සේ අපි බලනවා දැන් මේ කොහොම දෙයක් කරන්නේ කියලා. ඉතින් දැන් වෙලා තියෙන්නේ ඉන්න අයන්නේ නින්දා මේව පටන් අරන් ගන්න වෙලා තියෙනවා. ඉතින් ඒක මං පිළිගන්නවා. ඒක යම් කිසි සමාවට කරුණක් කියලා. නමුත් මං අවසන් වශයෙන් කියනවා එහෙම වුණත් ওই ලයිස්තුවේ සමහරක් දේවල් එච්චර සංකීර්ණ නැහැ. ඉස්සර තිබ්බ ලංකාවේ පුද්ගලිකංශයේ රෝහලක්. ඒකට ඉස්සලා කිව්වේ ඔපොලෝ කියලා. ඒ ඔපොලෝ කියන හොස්පි රෝහල සම්පූර්ණ පුද්ගලික අංශයේ පටන් ගත්ත එකක්. ඒක ලංකාවේ කොටස් වලඳ වලට ගිහිල්ලා මොනයම් හේතු වුණුඩ හෝ හැරි ජයවදන මහත්තයා ඒකේ කොටස් ඒකේ පාලන බලය ලබා ගත්තා. කොටස් වැඩි ප්‍රමාණයක් අරගෙන. ඒ ගත්තේ ශ්‍රී ලංකා ඉන්ෂුරන්ස් කෝපරේෂන් එකේ මිල මුදල් වලින්. එතකොට මේකට කිසිම සම්බන්ධ දෙන්නේ නැති මේ කොහෙවත් යන වෙන නඩු තීන්දුවකින් ශ්‍රී ලංකා ඉන්ෂුරන්ස් එක අපෝ ආණ්ඩුවට ගියා. හැරි යවතන මහත්තයාට දෙන්න මේ මේක ආණ්ඩුවට ගියා. ඒතකොට ඒකට අයිති දේවල් ආණ්ඩුවට ගියා. දැන් එහෙම දේවල් කීපයක් තියෙනවා. ඒකට අයිති 
लंका हॉस्पिटल से कहाँ डूट गया एक अटाई थी अरे मैं कैनविल के लार अरे तीन ने हायट के कोटा सुत आन डूट गया ओह मो में गया तो रे लिट्रो एक आई थी एगोलैंड अरे तें ओह म अहम बेंग आन डूट गया कोटा स्विलंद पले तिबुनु आयतन एक ऐ संकीर्ण नवता पुत्गली करते पुत्गली कर रहे हैं किरीम ऐ एक संकीर्ण एक अदा एक केलीम कोटा स्विलंद पड़ दाला कोटा स्विलंद पले ओने नेट गाने एक लगिया नहीं दिखा एक ही किसी में संकीर्ण दाय वैन ने दें अभी वेनत्ते आयतने के नकाता करूँ ना अभी कि नो मे अभी मे के भूमि निरोलायतियाँ क उपते इन दम वीडियो पुत्गली का आयतन ऐकेरी टे एके देशों सी माँ एके 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 मैं इडंग कोतनी पटंग करने कोतनी दीवर वेने सीलु में देवल एको लंगे वार्ता करीम गिनुं वार्ता करीम मैं कोम ती इन्ने पुत्गली कांसे क्रमवेदन नन इतुरे ऐ एवेनी आयतन ऐक इक मंटे पुत्गली करने करन टे बेरियुने मैं मास Bapak Sudhi Profesor Samar Jiva, mangat terma dahas tak pandai balap orang tuh ini, me raja itu itu via parasaha, dushane sambande, mangi tanne dushane sambande, wisala katika atau tak samaji itu ina, wanca atau sidu ina, dushane sidu ina kehela, iting egen atau mae mang muli kawasan dahas tak pandai balap orang tuh ini, saham me raja itu itu via parasaha, samaga tiennya sambande tak ada pelibat, mangat terma ina kamu tuh kalpana kara kara ave, me wata kau tuh me raja itu itu via parasaha kehela, nama dah me kehela. Mungkin ada terus meva raja itu itu biaya par, nama meva horun itu itu biaya par, eh mana tentang desa balak nyun itu itu biaya par. Meva ini kisi mana raja itu itu sambandh itu awe utmat pain nah, meka ani pettinge nanti, ekatama meka janata awa itu itu, me janata sampat kira mana meka janata awa itu itu katya pain nih nih. Mungkin ada janata awa itu itu nih meka janata awa itu api kau ru tel telekom meka ing call gan nih nih nomile, api gana gevala gan. Itu kotak, ini dah mata rupa api itu kotak kau rut tapi rasa awal berita dagan nih kia aku tuh nih muda non itu nih, ini eka api itu itu aku tuh nih. Ini dah mata rupa oleh tiada tanah kita api itu yang ni ni eva kerana nak be. Eka ni sah, mek janata awat itu itu kita mati nak kisi mana janata awat itu itu sebab apa pain nih. Atter nama janata awat itu itu kita lagi yang nih. Pudgali kan sih itu itu ini nama mangkita nama kotas filan tu boleh orang proses samar jiwa kita bagi life tu kita kerana anna janata awat itu itu tiada muka tu mata kehilu ke kotas sak mila di arah kena, ek kotas se mila wedi nak kami wedi nuat pas se mata ek wikun la laba kupe gani me awasta awat tiada hamot me kisi me badah bagin toro, ini meka mata pe terinna khaud me raja itu itu via par kila dah meka meka raja itu itu tiada meka atter nama itu amu mamu horu rela kita nama meka itu, ekat abih loko nama ghal tiada nama raja itu itu via par kila meka janata via par kila hina nama ghal Kahaga na, yang mana selalu mat tamai dia. Nampaknya mama nikam me katakas mat dia na, nampaknya meka dia nama IMF warata ave hatta hatara ini pitu. Me mehata kadi diri pat kerupu IMF warata ave hatta hatara ini pitu. Advokat ayek ape research cekam uputa dakkomin box artikel lekak vidya le dalat dia nama box number three kaya nake the case of Lakvijay coal power plant kela me galanguru hara kerupu visal wangcha sambandha. मैं हमारा राज्य टाइप की व्यापार एक गतो तेम मैं वही दूषणे सा वंचा व संबंधे प्रधान प्रश्न एक बार बात तलाती है ने मैं विशाल होरा कांडा है मक मैं व्यापार आरागनी आना नहीं सा इधिं एक बार आवासन आवक का वाकी अविल्ला दिए ने जनता आवक के पैतर मैं के जनता आवक के पैतर कोच्चर अविल्ला � देदास पहेइ इंदर देदास विषय का वेना कांग आउरुदु दालवाशे इन पहलवे का दास ये का काले का टा समस्त एक विधि टा भी पारुला बलती है ना वा रुपियाल ट्रिलियन एकाए दसमाटा ट्रिलियन एकाए दसमाटा ट्रिलियन एकाए दसमाटा के लगे अन्य में का सामान्य मिनिस्टर अभी के ने बोक्कट आदेन विधि टा Itu kod api mek katakan ni making wicca padu payi badde gevana katia aurudu dha atak payi badde gevu utteh ma oya raja itu itu biapar kihipek padu piawan ni vitara pulwa laba laba ni me padu piawan ni pulwang aurudu dha atak 
Pay but the Gavutem. We will pardu with Ranitega, a Gananakirima, Tetra Mame Boma Saman, Minister of the Terrena, Mother Aurdu, Pahakata calling billionaire, other billion anyway, Nitoda, Ganite, our may financial accounting system, Gatina, net present value with the Magan, Emakato, Temaka, Maker, Eat at Pada, Vishalaga, Ekanisa, Ekapat the King Eka. Eat a mother of Rajayata, the Viapar, then Lanka with the Hamumakataka and Pradan Prashnata, Mekapatak in Dushane, Anipatim, Mahanayabar, Hamumakina, Naya, Aragin, and Nayata Kala, Piva, Natata, Nativella, Sunna, Dulivella, Flatte, Flatpella, the Indigal the Megian, Rajayata, the Viapar, or Naya who them, Atharam Apita, Usma, Abigan, Husma Hiravanagan, to Meva Nai. Kuchar Naya the Gilagina, Ethanatino, Tower, Trillion, Ekai, the Shama Pahakata, Asan, the Pramanak Naya. Eight trillion acres of Shampahaki Laganet or Saman Minisungi Boka Vadin within Madima Pantik and the Teranagan to go to him. Billion egg does Pansiak, Egian Api Hamo, Mekatuela, where Rataiana pay but the Vadinisaki and Hamoma, Tava Urdu Pahalava Baduke would him pay but the Aking Pulwango, Rajeta, the Viapar, Kipega, Naya Pramane, Chutak, Adugaran. Icharata maker, nay, I think Ogolan Hitaga and Bulo, make a coacher, Balapatra, Prasna, the Gela, eat Amatra. Then we are Naya Prativu Katakirim, Kerala, Parisi, Gila, Saka, Chakarala, main Desi and Naya Prativu Katakarala, we are Kuma Selandala, Ape Naya Barra, Api Balapuru Twene, Siete Kasi Visiate in the Siete Anupaka, Adugaragana, Aurudu Dayaki Aurudu Dayaki. Again, it did us. Uh, this decade, Ape Nayabara, Daladeshi Nishpadre Sapexa, Kasia Visia Tibilla, Anupata Dugaragan Tame, Apime, Dana Selang Okomadan, Hebe, Anipatin, Ara Rajeda Itiviapara, Maha Nayabarak Araganatiana, Ape Daladeshi Nishpadre Sapex, Kutcher Naya the Good, Ape Rajeda Itiviapara, Kipe the Vitara, Naya, Mamakiana, Dedas, Visideka Urudi. Mang itu orang Urdu lalat ya, mana? Muka tu mama kami tina udah pan dera khatir me heart attack dina. Dalawasin electricity board dega gatto tema. Ego lalu vitarak nayai billiona ekasiya tisna mea. Mereka ni public debt, public guarantee dega ni raja apa vela electricity board dega ni dila dina mana? Dada asisi dega apa yang datta vela dana billiona ekasiya tisna mea. Matukat dia agan na pay bad dengan apa itu hamba wenne billiona CI. Electricity board dekat itu tak billion na ekasiya tis nama ya. Petroleum corporation ni kat tahun ayat tina billion na siya. Apa jala sampah dana ha jala perwahan na mandal ya billion na desi anu ekai. Dalam bahasa ini billion na tuh siya. Eka ni pay ibad dawa ke tuh guna ek ekar raja itu ayat iya apa ya. Sri Lanka ni ala ini kat billion na hatta dekai. Mangu ekiuwe ayatana hatarak vitarai. Oleh bagai, apay ayat ini rehana penda buih di ata ya ke presentation ni kedi ayat ini pansiya kat asan na pramanya aktin, macam ayat ini kasiya kana kara commercial level ni, kasiya asu kat asan na pramanya, namu tu wedi hari aktin ni commercial level. E ni sa me kata karan duusane nama tanna nanti ayam me farta aga tu tuhe ma palave ni paricce itu tu nama dia tuhe ni duusane nama tanne kau mudi gila. Iti me duusane sidu ana pradhana krama aktin me me raja itu ayat iya par, duusane winne me raja itu ayat iya par ara make मैनेज करान नेतु में का प्रतिबिंब का तो करान नेतु अपि में दूषणे वंचावें थोड़ा रटक वेन वा विनिविद बावे आरक्षा करने वा किएने का खावत दावत विन्ने ने अरे सारा ला बास आवें किएने वा ना में राजेटा ये दिव्य आपार प्रतिबिंब का तो करान नेतु साक्रया के पुता वाई मटवत बै में वैदेना नवतन म Api me raja itu itu biapar pratisangvidane kiri ma pramada kerotte he ma me pramada kiri ma te biyeda mati ano. Ilang awur udh mati varan enna balapur utu ano deng proses samara jiwa ki uwa ke thame attera me ikka pratibiyu kat kiri ma kat vela ane. Background dekat ti ano samahar deval kalla ti ano own ara state owned enterprises unit teka own principles nama ak mula darma nama ak sahita wa document dekat ni kudkal lah tiennah, ianu own kiel lah tiennah, arah raja, vivida panat haraha, vivida ayatna niyamane, ianu mah, evo komar samagam panat ayat tera ganone, eva ge muladar mana meyak di lah tiennah, namu tham, apikianne saman ni bahasa kena visil vitera balti ne, tham ekkama pratibiyu kat kiri mah kau sidu ne ne, meka winne naya kiel lah kianne, mati varan wasarak evil lah, apik nawat varak desha paran apikianne arah maha me pariwarta nak alai kerja giat pasai, api tu me ikapat keragangan beri unut me naya barah, nawat awarak jantawa ke barat, kharat, inek, nawat tan be. 
එතකොට මේ ප්‍රශ්නේ ආර්ථික අර්බුදය ඔඩු දුවනවා ඒ වගේම අපි අර හිටපු තැනට අර පෝලිං සහ ඊටමත්ම අපහසු කාලවකවානුවක් අපි පහු කරා තාමත් අපි එතනින් එලියට ඇවිල්ලා නැහැ අපි නැවත වරක් එතෙන්ට ලිස්සල යන්න නිකන් මිලිමීටරයක නැත්නම් මිලිමීටරයක තවත් 10න් පංගුවක එජ් එකක් විතර අපිට තියෙන්නේ මොකද ඔක කරගන්න බැරි වුණා කියලා කියන්නේ රජයට ඉස්සරහට යන්න බෑ අනිත් එක මේ රජයට ඇයි ව්‍යාපාර ප්‍රතිසංවිධානය කිරීමෙන් රජයට තියෙන මූලික ප්‍රශ්න හතරක් ඇත්තටම විසඳ ගන්න පුළුවන් රජයට තියෙන ප්‍රශ්න මොනවද ආදායම නැහැ ආදායම නැහැ කියලා හැමෝටම බදු වැඩි කරලා තියෙනවා වියදම වැඩි වියදම වැඩි කියලා වියදම කපන්න කියලා තියෙනවා ඒකත් එක ප්‍රශ්නයක් ණය බර වැඩි ණය වැඩි කියලා හැමදිස්සෙම කියනවා අපි හැමෝම දන්නවා ණයට කෑව කියලා විදේශීය ආයෝජන නැහැ මේ හතරටම ඇඩ්‍රස් කරන්න පුළුවන් ප්‍රධානම එක තමයි රජයට ඇයි ව්‍යාපාර ප්‍රතිසංවිධානය කරන එක මොකද පුද්ගලිකකරණය කරනවා කියලා නැත්නම් පුද්ගලිකාංශයේ සහ රජය එකතු වෙලා මේක කරනවා කියලා කියන්නේ අපේ සම්පත්තික ට්‍රාන්සැක්ෂන් එකක් වෙනවා කියලා කියන්නේ රජයට විශාල ආදායමක් ගන්න පුළුවන් මේ සමහර ට්‍රාන්සැක්ෂන්ස් වලින් රජයට ඇති ව්‍යාපාර ප්‍රතිසංවිධානය කරන්න එතනින් රජයට ආදායම ගන්න පුළුවන් වියදම අඩු කරන්න කොහොමද මේ රජයට ඇති ව්‍යාපාර නිතරම දූෂණය වංචාවෙන් තියෙන දේවල් ඒක ප්‍රතිසංවිධානය කරා කියලා කියන්නේ තවදුරටත් මේ අර ලේ බ්ලීඩ් වෙනවා කියලා කියන්නේ මේක සල්ලි නාස්ති වෙන එක නවතිනවා එතනින් අපිට වියදම ඉතුරු කර ගන්න පුළුවන් ඒ වගේ මම අර කලින් කිව්වා වගේ ට්‍රිලියන එකයි දශම පහක් විතර ණය තියෙනවා එතකොට මේව ප්‍රතිසංවිධානය කරනවා කියලා කියන්නේ අපේ ණය බරත් සෑහෙන්න අඩු වෙනවා අර පබ්ලික් අපි කියන ඩෙට් ටු ජීඩීපී රේෂියෝ එක කියලා ඒකත් සැලකිය යුතු ප්‍රමාණයක් අඩු වෙනවා එතක මේ සමහර ණය අරන් තියෙන ඩොලර් වලින් මේව ඩොලර් වලින් ගෙවන්න ඕනේ වෙළඳපොළ අපි කියන මාකට් එකෙන් බරෝ කරලා තියෙනවා එතකොට මේක කරන්න අමාරුයි අපිට එතකොට ණය බරත් අඩු වෙනවා අනිත් එක මේ සමහර ඒවා ප්‍රතිසංවිධානය කිරීමේ දී අපිට විදේශීය ආයෝජකයන් වගේ ගෙන්න ගන්න පුළුවන් මේක ප්‍රතිසංවිධානය කරද එතකොට ආයෝජන අවස්ථාවක් තියෙනවා එතකොට ආදායම වැඩි කරගන්න වියදම අඩු කරගන්න ණය බර අඩු කරගන්න ආයෝජන වැඩි කරගන්න කියන මේ හතරම කරන්න අපිට විශාල අවස්ථාවක් තියෙනවා මේ රජයට ඇති ව්‍යාපාර කරගත්තට පස්සේ ප්‍රතිසංවිධානය කරගත්තට පස්සේ අපිට තියෙන ප්‍රධාන ප්‍රශ්න තමයි මේක හෙනම හෙන හෙමින් ඉවි ගමනෙන් ගොළු බෙල්ලගේ වේගෙන් වෙන්නේ මේ වේගෙන් ගිහිල්ලා නම් කවදාවත් මේ ප්‍රශ්නෙන් අපිට ගොඩ එන්න හම්බෙන්නේ නැහැ මොකද මේ ආර්ථික අර්බුදෙන් අපි ඉක්මනට ගොඩ එන්න ඕනේ මේකෙන් ඇවිල්ලා මේ අපි කියන්නේ තට්ටු දදා ගිහිල්ලා මේකෙන් අපිට ගොඩ එද්දි වෙන්න ඕන ටික වෙලා ඉවරයි මොකද ඊට අමතරව තව ප්‍රශ්න ගොඩක් එනවා අපි හැමෝම දන්නවා භූදේශ පාලනයේ ප්‍රශ්න තියෙනවා ඒ අනුව දැන් මේ තියෙන යුද තත්ත්වයත් එක්ක ලෝක වෙළඳ පොලේ තෙල් මිලව අරවල් මේව ඉහළ යනවා ලබන අවුරුද්ද මුළු ලෝකෙම මැතිවරණ අවුරුද්දක් ඒ වයින් මොන වගේ තත්ත්වයක් උදා වෙද්ද නැහැ අපි මේක ඇවිල්ලා මේ තට්ටු දදා ගිහිල්ලා වල ලංකාව වගේ පොඩි රටවල් නැවත වරක් සෑහෙන්න අමාරුවක වැටෙන දුර වැඩි ඈතක නෙවෙයි ඒ නිසා මේ රජයට ඇති ව්‍යාපාර ප්‍රතිසංවිධානය වෙන්න මෝනේ එහෙම නැතු වුණොත් ඒක මේ ලංකාවේ ජනතාවට විශාල බරක් බවට පත් වෙනවා මං හිතන්නේ මාධ්‍යවේදී සහෘදයෝ දන්නවා මේ රජයට ඇති ව්‍යාපාර ප්‍රතිසංවිධානය ගැන කතා කරන්නේ මං හිතන්නේ ඒක දශකයකට වඩා වැඩි නමුත් මේ එකක්වත් තාම හරියට සිදු වුණේ නැති එකේ බර ජනතාවට එන එක මං හිතන්නේ ඔවුන්ට කරන විශාල අසාධාරණයක් ඔවුන්ට මේක අයිතියකුත් නැහැ ඔවුන්ගේ සාක්කුවෙන් සල්ලි අරන් බදු වලින් මේවට ණය ගෙවනවා වියදම් කරනවා ජනතාවට කිසිම මේ අපි කියන්නේ සහනදායී තත්ත්වයක් එන්නේ නැහැ බදු අනිත් පැත්තෙන් ඉතින් ඒ නිසා මේ ප්‍රතිසංවිධානය අනිවාර්යයෙන්ම කරන්න ඕනේ ඒක කරීමෙන් විතරයි අපිට දූෂණය සහ වංචාව මැඩලන්න පුළුවන් IMF වාර්තාවේ තියෙන විදියටම දූෂණය වංචාව මැඩලන්න පුළුවන් ඒක නිසා අපේ ඇඩ්වොකාට ඉදිරිපත් කරපු වාර්තාව IMF රිපෝට් එකේ 64 වෙනි පිටුවේ සහ මගේ මතකයේ නිවර්ධනම් 76 වෙනි පිටුවේ උපුටල දක්වලා තියෙන අපි මේ දූෂණය වංචාව සම්බන්ධයෙන් IMF මේ මේ රජයට ඇති ව්‍යාපාර සිදුවල සිදුවන දූෂණය සම්බන්ධයෙන් ඒ නිසා දූෂණය වංචාව අඩු කරන්න ජනතාවට බර අඩු කරන්න විදේශ ආයෝජන වැඩි කරන්න රජයට අයිති ව්‍යාපාර රජයට අයිති රජයට ආදායම වැඩි කරන්න රජයේ වියදම අඩු කරන්න මේ ඔක්කොටම තියෙන ප්‍රධානම බෙහෙතක් තමයි මේ රජයට අයිති ව්‍යාපාර ප්‍රතිසංවිධානය කිරීම මේ නිසා අපි නැවත අවධාරණය කරනවා රජය මේකට ප්‍රමුඛත්වය දිය යුතුයි හැබැයි මේ ප්‍රතිසංවිධානය විනිවිධ භාවයෙන් සහ කාර්යක්ෂම වෙන්නත් ඕනේ මොකද අර කියමනක් තියෙනවා සල්ලි හම්බ කරගත්තු හම්බ කරගත්තු හැමෝම හම්බ කරගත්ත එක්කෝ සතපහක් වටින් නැති දෙයක් රජයට හෙන ගහන ගානකට විකුණලා එහෙම නැත්තම් හෙන රජයේ හෙන ගහන වටින දෙයක් සතපහකටවත් වටින් නැති ගානට රජයෙන් සල්ලි දීලා අරගෙන ඒ නිසා මේ ජනතාව අතරත් සමහරට සැකයක් ඇති වෙනවා මේ ප්‍රතිසංවිධානය වෙද්දි මේක රජයට මෛත්‍රී කිහිප දිනෙකට නැවත වරක් ඒකෙනුත් ගානක් කපා ගන්න
ඔන්ට්‍රපනෝෂිප් දේශපාලනය ව්‍යාපාර සහ ව්‍යවසායකත්වයට වඩා ලාභදායි වූ තැන අපිට නිෂ්පාදනය කරන්න පුළුවන් එකම එක භාණ්ඩය දුප්පත්කම විතරයි කියලා. ඒක තමයි මම හිතන්නේ අපි මේ රජයට අයිති ව්‍යාපාර හරහා කරමින් ඉන්නේ. ඒ නිසා මේක ප්‍රති සංවිධානයේ ඊටමත්ම අවශ්‍යයි. මම රවි රත්න සභාපතිට ආරාධනා කරනවා. මෙතනින් පසුව අදහස් දක්වන්න. Um, thank you. I'll make some remarks uh, which will, uh, uh, I'll talk about making a case for the listing of the state bank shares. Right, I'll start by giving a few uh, incidents that will illustrate the problems with uh, state ownership of banks and some <laughs> of the problems with it. So I think Rehana talked about theoretical side of things. I'll give you little examples that will illustrate uh, that will illustrate the uh, problem uh, and uh, then I'll finally get on to uh, why I feel uh, uh, the rationale for divesting the state banks and a proposed formula for doing so. Now our story starts with, uh, with Sri Lankan Airlines, right? Because in 1998, the government sold 43.6% of the shares to Emirates for $70 million, right? Then in 2010, the government took back the stake. They paid only $53 million for it. So, so you sold it for 70 and you took it back for $53 million. So it seems like you made a bit of a profit there, right? Now, uh, and at the time, uh, a cabinet uh, paper uh, that was submitted said that it was desirable that strong institutional investors uh, such as the state banks who should be allowed to purchase shares because they would benefit from the prevailing economic conditions and the tourism boom. This was in 2010, just after the war finished, right? So that was the case that was made. But if you ask who actually purchased, the, when you say the government, right? Uh, who, where did the share, who, uh, who actually purchased it? It wasn't the treasury that purchased the shares. Uh, it was actually the Bank of Ceylon which purchased 23.54% uh, of the company, the People's Bank which bought 8.23% of the company, the National Savings Bank which bought another 8.23% of the company and the EPF which bought 3.62%. So these four uh, government institutions are now the owners of uh, or, the, or they are the people who bought over the stake from Emirates, right? Then. Now, of course, the subsequent losses uh, that Sri Lanka had made since it was taken over by the government, of course, are well known, right? But the question is, how were these losses financed, right? Now, when, a, when you are when making cash losses, right, you are spending more money than you are earning, right? Now, uh, this is something that's impossible to do for, the, uh, for, for somebody in, uh, in the private sector. When the government is doing it, they do so by printing money at the central bank and, uh, and spending money that doesn't exist, right? But uh, in the case of uh, normal corporate entities, even state-owned entities, they can't print their own currency, right? So they are spending more than they are earning, right? So how do they finance these losses, right? The losses are financed, uh, obviously, by the only option they have is to borrow. Right, so now who is lending to these state uh, enterprises? So to Sri Lanka or Sri Lanka, who has lent? It is the Bank of Ceylon and the People's Bank. First they bought the shares and now they have financed the losses. So the Bank of Ceylon uh, is owed 62,207 uh, uh, million rupees, uh, which is about 62 billion dollar rupees. Uh, the People's Bank, 103 uh, uh, billion rupees. Now, if you look at the balance sheet of, uh, of uh, Sri Lankan Airlines, uh, these uh, the uh, amounts due to the Bank of Ceylon and the People's Bank make up about 43% of all, uh, all liabilities of the airline, right? Uh, uh, if you look at the, if you exclude the lease liabilities, now a large part of the liabilities is the pay amounts payable on aircraft leases, right? If you take out the, uh, lease liabilities from the uh, equation and you'll see who has uh, put in the cash uh, on the, uh, apart from lease liabilities, from the interest bearing liabilities, 98% are 
bank of Ceylon and the People's Bank. Right, so they've uh, uh, they've basically funded the a large part of these losses. There's also trade creditors, right? People who do. Uh, uh, I'll come to that. Uh, uh, a little bit uh, uh, later because there's another aspect. Uh, so the trade creditors are non-interest bearing. So uh, so apart from that, the, all the interest bearing component from the banks has been the People's Bank and the Bank of Ceylon. Right? Now uh, the question is uh, 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 the airline is insolvent. Right? The liabilities exceed the assets. You have 182 billion worth of assets and 608 billion wor worth of liabilities, right? You are in the red by 426 billion. The auditor says that there is material uncertainty as to whether the airline can continue as a going concern. And the accounts have been prepared on a going concern basis only in view of the support from the cabinet uh, and the secretary to the treasury confirming that they will continue to support the uh, airline. Right now, the government has defaulted on its debt, so the foreign debt, and they have be, and they've done some restructuring on the local debt as well. Right, so the important questions regarding state banks that arise. Right, these loans were all granted against letters of guarantee or comfort issued by the treasury. Right, in other words, these loans were not they the bank could not grant these on commercial terms. Right on normal commercial terms, they could not. They are only granted because the uh, uh, secretary to the treasury has issued a letter saying the government will take over or pay in the event the uh, the institution is unable to pay. Right now, the question with the banks is now if you have given loans on, against treasury guarantees, do you make provisions for bad debts? Right? Under normal circumstances, because you assume the sovereign is uh, cannot default, right? Uh, the usual uh, convention might be that you don't uh, that you don't actually make provision for your bad debts, right? If they are supported by guarantees. But what are the actual prospects of recovery? Right? Then the next question is: If provision is inadequate, right? Are the profits of state banks overstated? Right, prima facie, the state banks are the most profitable of all the SOEs. But do these profits truly reflect the quality of the assets on their books? Right. Uh, now, if adequate provision were to be made, right, for the uh, for the losses that might arise from state-owned uh, enterprise debts, right, do these these losses are not small; they're large, right? And do uh, these losses pose systemic risk to the stability of the, of the financial sector, right? Because the People's Bank and the Bank of Ceylon are the two biggest uh, banks in the country, right? Uh, if you provide for all the losses that you have accumulated in your books, which, are may, which you have not because you've got guarantees, right? Uh, you'll find that the capital of the banks is wiped out, right? And then you might find that, uh, uh, so there's a huge risk that you're carrying in terms of financial sector stability because these banks have gone and funded uh, things that you can't recover, right? Then you have this problem of what is called circular debt, right? Now, this is a cascade of debts uh, within, the, uh, within the energy sector, right? That starts from the, uh, from the oil refinery, goes on to the electricity provider, and then to end users, right? Now, in Sri Lanka, the, this problem of circular debt, this cascade, is particularly severe because it, it involves about seven of the largest, uh, right, that uh, SOEs are involved, the two state banks, uh, and uh, then the uh, electricity board, the Petroleum Corporation, Sri Lanka Airlines, Sri Lanka Ports Authority, the SLTB, the railway, all of these are involved. So what happens is the CPC provides fuel on credit to the CEB. The CEB goes and um, uh, provides uh, uh, electricity to all uh, entities, including the, uh, uh, including the uh, state entities. Right? When the state entities don't pay the CEB, the CEB is unable to, uh, because they are, they are running other losses, uh, they don't have the cash flow, they don't pay the CEB, the CEB can't pay the CPC. Right? Then, uh, uh, then the CEB does this, uh, uh, the, the CPC in turn provides 
uh, apart from the CEB, they provide uh, fuel to the railways, the airline, the uh, the uh, the transport board, the ports authority. Now, if these people don't pay the CPC, again the CPC uh, can't pay the banks, right? So this you have a web of debts, right? That uh, uh, that have built up uh, all under trade creditors, right? Not recorded as <laughs> debts, but uh, which uh, uh, which are hidden inside these, uh, uh, we, uh, and you know it starts from one end and goes on to the other. So it's in a circle, right? So now if we look at uh, the CPC annual report for 2021, the corporation recovered trade receivables from the tri forces, Sri Lanka Police and Railway Department up country to 11.4 billion against taxes payable to the government as a treasury set off. Right, what they have done is uh, uh, they have now here in it sense the state has stepped in, cancelled off some taxes and uh, and set off liabilities. Right, uh, and uh, they've said despite the massive outstanding balances on state-owned enterprises such as CEB, as Sri Lanka uh, Airlines, CPC com is committed to continuous supply of the to these institutions to facilitate continuous distribution uh, and the economic development. Right. Now, Sri Lankan Airlines report uh, that they owe 72 billion to the CPC. Uh, uh, when we uh, when we looked at the airlines balance sheet, I said there was uh, something called trade creditors, which is non-interest bearing, uh, which was also which has also essentially financed the losses. So what has happened is they haven't paid the CPC uh, because they were losing money. Had uh, so there's so that's another source of financing that the airline has used, right? Yeah, the CEB general manager in a news uh, article has said that uh, a number of state hospitals, key armed forces establishments held most of their debts unpaid. Right. So, so this is the cycle of uh, of uh, of what is called circular debt. Right. So, uh, so this for anyone who has uh, uh, who has uh, uh, studied uh, or been engaged in risk management. Uh, in the uh, in either in insurance or in the corporate sector, you know the, this uh, this is a very dangerous situation because what you have is a network of uh, of what people call too interconnected to fail, right? A phenomenon. If one set goes bad somewhere, right, you can have a cascade running through uh, and ending up in a, a state bank that multiplies, and you don't know where exactly this has gone, right? It's a domino effect, right? So that's uh, very very dangerous right so you have uh, so you so this is where uh, uh, this uh, issue of circular debt um, uh, uh, this contagion effect that, that makes it so dangerous right now what is the case now these are just incidents right what is the case for uh, for maybe privatizing or listing the state bank share to begin with why were these state banks set up Right now, in 1948, when we got independence, right, there was a very uh, nascent banking sector. There were a few foreign banks, uh, mostly dealing with uh, uh, tea and plantation crop exports, of, uh, uh, and they had accounts for the for the businesses. Uh, a few uh, of the uh, upper classes of society maintained bank accounts. The vast majority of people did not have a bank account. There were no branches. There were a few local, small local banks, no branches, right? the government needed wanted to mobilize savings they wanted people to uh, have access to bank accounts so that they don't have to keep money in their ma under mattresses right so in 1961 they set up the people's bank they nationalized the bank of ceylon and there was some rationale for uh, for the state to set up a banking system right now it does that rationale exist anymore you get any number of private banks that are there there are multiple branches all over the place every sri lanka who wants a account uh, has an account the the central bank says there are 58 million bank accounts in the country for a population of 22 million there's no problem with a bank account getting a loan is also now not a big problem you can get leases you can get loans you get credit card debt there is no issue with access to finance or access to the financial system so does the rationale for state banks exist anymore fundamentally no now uh, uh, the market has developed to the to a level where the state banks don't need to play that role that they were set up to do in uh, uh, 
uh, in uh, in 1960, right? So uh, so the rationale no longer exists, right? The second problem is that the state banks become piggy banks that finance the vanities of various uh, uh, ministers, right? So uh, this is when Sri Lankan Airlines was originally set up after Air Ceylon when it was Air Lanka, right? They asked Singapore for assistance. Right, Lee Kuan Yew, in his memoirs, recounts that he advised Jaya Jawarna not to do this because he said it would take too many talented administrators uh, and engineers who could be better used uh, in uh, in agriculture and in other areas. Right, uh, Jaya Jawarna had told him that he wanted an airline because it was a symbol of poor progress. Right, so uh, anyway, because he insisted, they complied. Right, so it was one man's uh, vanity. Right, so. Uh, what the state banks do is they finance vanity projects that uh, uh, that the politicians want. Even the even the uh, takeover in uh, 2010 was also uh, a vanity. Um, what had already been sold was taken back out of vanity. Right, you can't really. Uh, there was no other real rationale for that. Right now, although the government uh, is addressing some of these. Uh, issues where the debts are now being uh, absorbed into the government, right? The, uh, this circular debt um, is, a, is a, until it's fully taken out, it remains a risk to your uh, to your uh, to your financial system stability. And so, uh, it is better if the state banks can no longer lend to uh, to the state enterprises. Then you have then they don't have this limitless source of finance from which they can build up these large uh, uh, hidden liabilities, right? So you cut that uh, problem out and uh, you force them to face reality that you are making losses, you have no more money to run, and then you need to uh, start figuring out how to make your business uh, financially sustainable, right? You can't keep running back and, uh, and taking money from uh, essentially the state banks who, uh, who will later cover their losses by going back to the government. Right, so these are some of the issues that, uh, uh, so some of the questions that uh, that arise uh, with regard to state banks and uh, and their involvement in uh, in SOEs. Now, I said I wanted to talk about listing the state banks. Right now, I have a formula. Right, I would say sell thirty percent, thirty percent of the shares should be listed. The way you do this is this: ten percent you gift free to employees. Right, ten percent you have a preferential allocation. You buy at market price, but you have a preferential allocation for customers, depositors and borrowers, right? If you have a loan, if you have a deposit, you have a preferential allocation of, uh, in the public issue, right? 5% further, you allocate for retail investors, ordinary members of the public. If you want to buy, you can buy. We have a preferential allocation. And 5% you offer to local and foreign institutions, right? Now, who are the stakeholders of the banks, right? They are the customers, they are the employees, they are the citizens, right? You are giving the, uh, them the opportunity to own the banks, right? Uh, so what could be more, <laughs> uh, more public than that, right? So uh, uh, you have, you are basically giving the state bank to its, uh, allow the stakeholders to participate uh, and own uh, in what is supposedly being run for their benefit by the politicians, right? So, uh, so that uh, uh, and uh, and a transparent uh, open IPO uh, will uh, uh, also do a lot of uh, benefit by generating activity on the stock market, right? Which has uh, which has uh, which has a uh, ripple effect from there. So, so that's my uh, case for listing of state banks. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi. Prashna Dino na mangita na dang yomukaran na puluang microphone at Dino. Eh hara Prashna yomukaran na awasta at Dino. Pe madhi sahur tayan. Well, if you want to, if you, let's take your, your, your two scenarios, right? There is delay on the part of the state, 
there are no no buyers so for there to be a buyer there has to be an offer has there been an offer now when i talked about the ipo the slt ipo back in 2000 2001 i said twice they had tried and they withdrew it because they didn't get they had a sense they they spent the effort they were about to go on road shows and they had a sense that they wouldn't wouldn't come there have been occasions when people have actually made offers dammika perra when he was uh, boi chairman uh, offered some taxi licenses auctioned and nobody came not one single bidder came now that is lack of bidders but here there has been no offer has there been an offer pay this and try to get it up and so there has no to be a concrete place to yeah yes. but if you if you look back there were some that were privatized like if you go back insurance and all it came back hotels corporation yeah hotels corporation and all so what how did they manage through the perk is it well up to 2007 if you really go back to that period even the hotels corporation was done under sarat tamulgam it wasn't done by unp government mm -hmm. hotels corporation privatization was done Uh, under a SLFP government, led government, Saratamun government was the key individual. You had the mechanisms, so it is this sort of packaging and offering that is that appears to be a problem. And uh, I I think uh, the SOE unit is trying its best to get this packaging done. But uh, what I pointed out is that there are some cases like Lanka hospitals where it's not very complicated to do the do the offer. it's complicated but those decisions can be taken that's why i used an example i used an example because you see when the ipo came people should have been aware when the slt ipo in 2002 came people should have been aware what they were what the ipo was for so we said this means you you're investing in a company that will not have an international monopoly you are investing in a company that will have a mobile unit because up to that point there was some uncertainty around that we took the uncertainty out and then people knew what they were bidding for uh ravi yeah <coughs> uh, you mentioned sri lankan airlines uh, about uh, in 2010 uh, treasury bought uh, Uh, Sri Lankan Airlines uh, from Emirates through uh, People's Bank, Bank of Ceylon, and EPF. Now those uh, loans, now the Bank of Ceylon and People's Bank, those are considered as, as non-performing loans or the bad debts. Yes. Now these banks, these loans have are, uh, are classified as performing debts in the in the ba balance of the uh, balance sheets of the bank. because they have uh, they don't need to provide because they have got a guarantee or a letter of comfort from the uh, from the treasury and therefore uh, there would be no need to make provisions because you have security uh, but the issue is that ultimately it ends up on the they will have to go back to the government so that's uh, so that's the problem uh, sometimes back sri lankan airlines uh, they want to go for a wet lease of uh, by uh, taking uh, certain aircrafts what do you mean by wet lease uh, wet lease uh, i uh, i'm not an expert on airline but i think uh, wet lease uh, would be uh, airline uh, aircraft plus all crew whereas i think dry lease is uh, is just the uh, plane itself you know i think uh, 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 i think that's uh, uh, you might have to look it up but i think that's the distinction with with the with crew and without crew uh, can i ask us professor samandajeeva professor now you mention uh, the nippon telecraft telephone company japan uh, about the sri lanka telecom issue where it was a good a case study i suppose why why can't we introduce to the sri lanka airlines the same model because sri lanka airlines you said that they are incurring losses uh, every day 
because of this uncertainty. I know the key word is uncertainty. Uncertainty. Yeah. So I can't be introduced that type of model where uh, the Sri Lankan telecom. Well, actually, the Sri Lanka telecom model, if you were to call it a model, was one where a minority stake was given to a strategic investor with technical capabilities in that sector, right? It wasn't given to anybody. Like when I'm suggesting that we, we uh, put uh, Lanka hospitals on the stock market, I'm not saying people with experience in uh, hospital administration should be buying it. I can say anybody can buy it, right? But in the case of telecommunications, it's a technical area and airlines, there's an interest in having a strategic investor. Now, the strategic investor was offered 35%, right? That's the model, a minority share. And they've also said, once you give 35, 3.5% will have to be given to the employees. So, in effect, it was 38.5. Now, because the strategic investor would not have any assurance about how the company would be managed, there was a very important part of the uh, model, which was a management contract, which said you will be running the company. Even though you're a minority shareholder, you will be running, managing the company. The CEO, CFO, etc., will be yours. Uh, so that was the model that was applied in the case of Sri Lanka Telecom. That lasted till, uh, I think it was Mr. Tilanga Sumaptipala who got rid of it, right? the management contract was got rid of. And after that we had college classmates and uh, brothers of presidents and various people trying to run the, the company, right? Before that, there was a ironclad management contract with management fees, of course, right? Now that similar model was what was applied in the case of Sri Lankan Airlines in 1999, if I recall correctly, right? Which is Emirates got, I think, only about 20% of the company, right? And a management contract. So now you had a situation where planes were being destroyed on the ground and they were being replaced using insurance money and the airline revived without a burden on the government, right? The management contract was key. Now, what happened was that not only was the management contract violated, the CEO's work permit was cancelled because he didn't clear rooms for the security staff of the president of the country. The president of the country, they cleared the, the seats, but not for the whole entourage, right? So now in a situation like that, they exited. Will they, will, is that modern model replicable in the new environment? Will anybody take the risk of, of coming with a minority share and a management contract when the Sri Lankan government has essentially demonstrated that it doesn't respect these niceties? So it's a little difficult to think of that model applying to, to airlines. Uh, has uh, Advocato or has anyone uh, done any like a survey or some any kind of research on public support for privatization and restructuring and uh, like what would be the incentive for political parties whether in government or opposition to take up this cause which could be potentially risky for them in terms of a survey no we haven't done a public survey on uh, whether people are supporting for state-owned enterprises reforms, but we have engaged and interact with some of the state uh, uh, corporation unions and different stakeholders more on a qualitative basis. And uh, there has been, I think, openness for reforms because I think everyone who knows the numbers knows it's a dead end because you cannot move forward in that sense. So that's the answer for the first question. Uh, for political parties, what's the interest? There's it's a, a yes, so I, 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 I get your point. I think generally since they are the ones who are benefiting from it, it's difficult. I think that's one reason it is difficult to get it done. Uh, and that's why I think organizations like us and media, we have to make build that pressure to make it inevitable to get the reforms done. I think for there, there's also a benefit because the, the, the next crisis would impact all of them if they don't do these reforms, only 
only thing is they don't see that's coming uh, because they will none of them have any political future if they don't fix this issue if the same sort of economic catastrophe coming on the second round with another debt restructuring and another uh, similar set of situation of like what we went through it would be very difficult so i think it's a more uh, more avoiding the negatives is their incentive but as you very correctly said they are the one who are benefiting from it and that's why they are reluctant to get these reforms done yes. um, could i just add something to what could i add something to what Dalana sure. just said right i'll give you a couple of things to just think about right now uh, um, why was uh, back in 2016 when or 17 when Ravi Karnayaka was sacked as finance minister and transferred as foreign minister why did he become uh, minister of foreign affairs and lotteries right the second is recently there was a conflict between state ministers and cabinet ministers state ministers who are getting salaries and perks complaining that they are not getting cabinet positions you're getting a salary and you're getting uh, yeah, and you're getting other benefit, right? W what's the difference and why was there a conflict? They were, they, they went rebelling, right? The, that's because uh, uh, the clue is that there are institutions under you, right? Uh, uh, and uh, uh, which you can use for your benefit. You can staff them with people. You can um, use them to pay for your election campaigns. You can use their vehicles. You can, uh, uh, you can, um, you can do so many uh, things. Um, right, so there, be, uh, so there is. Uh, if you look at these incidents uh, uh, and ask, uh, uh, what are the incentives of the politicians, and how are they aligned with that of the public? I think you will have your answer. Uh, could you explain about the uh, need for the urgency? Is it to get the economy moving faster, or is it there's a window that might close? Uh, why do things have to be done uh, quickly? Because I think there is one of the problems that. The SRU has said this also that government processes also take long and they don't, the government processes take long and the SRU has said that the government processes take long and they don't want to end up in jail <laughs> in the future or something like that. The urgency, I think in, uh, even in uh, the private sector there is this concept that a new CEO comes in, you got to get things done in the first hundred days. In the public sector or in governments, there is a notion of, you know, there have been attempts to do the 100 days. That's very, very unrealistic in terms of public sector motion. But at least uh, one year is seen as a critical time period where there is a certain, I mean, you've got to get things done in your first year. That's generally, if you look at political science, if you look at the literature, uh, you'll find enough people writing about the importance of getting things done in the first year, right? Now, uh, the question is also that uh, we are actually dealing with a rather unprecedented crisis. Uh, even though we are beginning to forget, uh, there was a time when we would have an event here and people couldn't actually get to this place because the transportation system, the fuel supply, etc., was problematic. We would always ask uh, when we have a meeting whether there's backup electricity in that place, right? So we are beginning to forget these things. So if 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 the this is part of the crisis response, you have to do it while the memory of the crisis is still fresh, right? And then there is the question of the unions. Uh, I've had meetings with unions at their request, right? They wanted to get the issues clear and I sat with unions from all the uh, sort of sectors that are about to be privatized and they were basically, you know, I mean there was a certain tone that was being adopted which is more conversational than confrontational. Uh, but if you wait long enough, the confrontational tone will come back. That's just the way, way these things move. So that is why I think it's very important to, to recognize the, 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 the in, in significance of momentum uh, in the first year of a government. And uh, well, I mean, the fact remains that 2024 by all estimations is going to be an election year. There are four 
possible elections that can be held. Or you can also have a referendum. So five possible variations on elections that can be held in 2024. And I would generally argue that that's not the optimal time to be doing, uh, doing these kinds of reforms. Unions, you mentioned unions. Are unions, when you talk about the unions, unions also they represent political parties, um, union members. So you actually really reflect the, the, the issue. Well, I mean, I don't control who controls which unions and so on and so forth. So there are all kinds of unions in Sri Lanka. If anybody wants to talk about privatization or any economic matters, I will talk to them. Your question was? The unions, they represent different political parties. The unions that I spoke to belong to the, were affiliated with the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. About the state-owned uh, banks, you were talking about 1.5 trillion on all those things. If you talk it in single language, politicians that are deep to Which? Which one? Which I do not have the number. Yes, which I will get back to you. I do not have. This is basically what the institution has borrowed from banks and that's a that's a re reasonable component of the public debt but the debt cancellations that was given for politicians business friends and all that it's separate that's uh, the the debt that was right written off uh, that's a, that's a separate number this is mainly what the public the state corporations institutes have borrowed from the state banks or with an assurance from the government that they will pay back from different organizations. I do not have the number with me on what was the written off debt by the political friends. Ravi, you? Uh, what they do is periodically the treasury uh, will uh, will absorb it and take it off the book. So so uh, some of it has happened already because of in order to privatize with so, so much of debt you can't do it. So, so every so of so it builds up and builds up. Then suddenly uh, one block of it gets taken and dumped on the, you clean it up periodically. Yes, you see. Yes, 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 yeah. Bad, bad debts given to the private sector. Yeah, private sector is separate. Sorry, sorry. This is the SOE stuff the government keeps taking from time to time. And this is not the first time that the bank, in the 1990s also, the Bank of Sidon and People's Bank were bankrupt. Chandrika Bandaranaika brought down uh, some foreign uh, experts and put them in there, and they, they sat and uh, restructured the bank's wholesale because they had been. Uh, 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 there, there was a whole heap of bad debt. So then, uh, um, uh, with the, uh, uh, these were resurrected from bankruptcy in the 1990s, and now uh, back again. We are in the we, we have the fiction of profitability with uh, with uh, all the state guarantees of the debt. But if you take that out, you are back to square one. So one of the best things is uh, to cut the financing line. The funding line is the most critical thing for, for state. Politicians, yeah, you have to fix your political system, unfortunately. So it starts, uh, you have to go back to uh, uh, Mr. Iva Jennings' constitution. Uh, the, you had accountable government until 1970. Once you had dismissed, they uh, got rid of the uh, system of uh, uh, of the uh, uh, of that constitution, um, uh, you centralize power. Once you centralize power, uh, you, you, uh, the checks and balances disappear because it's, it's arms, it's the different branches of government that can check political power and excess. For you, uh, no, one thing is you spoke about, uh, you basically spoke about privatization and, uh, and restructuring, right? Another option is closure. You just close the damn thing up, right? Now, for example, you spoke about the numbers of Sri Lankan Airlines. I think the deficit is about from asset to liability is about 400 plus billion, right? Now, something on that where the leverage ratio is three times over the asset value, 
right? There is no chance of restructuring it unless the government is willing to pour billions into it, which at the moment government can't. Government can't borrow, government can't refinance. So they are in a sticky pot, sticky spot. So the, then the obvious solution would be privatized, so not privatization or not restructuring, it's, ju it's just closing the thing up, right? What is the procedure for the government or for the any institution or for the treasury to take to basically close a, a institution like that, for example, AKA Sri Lanka? Uh, the, the it depends on the on the legal because if it's a company, you can put it into liquidation, uh, uh, depending on where the liabilities are. If it's a state corporation, like maybe the Cashew Corporation or the Janata Estates Development Board, which is having uh, some dud estates, um, you know, it might be more complicated. So, uh, but but shutting those down uh, uh, in principle is is one of the solutions. The JDB. I don't think, and the CSPC, those things can't be, I don't think there's much happening with the cashew corporation either. So so those you might, uh, there is the rump of uh, the ceramics corporation left uh, some, somewhere uh, after most of it was privatized. All those you can basically close those down. Those have left, the ceramics corporation, I think now all the liabilities are all gone, but uh, but uh, JEDB and SLSPC, there's, uh, there's quite a lot that's left, but they do have the land, so that uh, the land can be uh, disposed of and maybe you can settle some of the uh, remaining outstanding, but close up, uh, you know, close up, because the, uh, what you have there is, uh, as a corporation, you can't sell it, but you might be able to sell some of the assets. A uh, few employees, so so there are labor shortages uh, on uh, on uh, in the estates also, so they can and uh, uh, yeah, I uh, I don't know how many employees are left there. Those I think are small. Most of those I think JDB SLSPC has employees, but uh, uh, but there are shortages. So you have to look at the all the as aspects and the issues. But uh, as a corporation, it uh, it may not be able to. You know, there's no point hanging on to that thing. Yeah, I think uh, the, the reform policy, SOE reform policy, I think firstly they want to bring everything under the Companies Act so that you can institute um, a procedure like what Ravi spoke about because right now uh, a certain portion of them are under the Finance Act and I think there's no legal provisions to uh, shut it down per se. So. Yes, the debt, debt is publicly guaranteed, so, yes. If you look at the uh, Air India privatization, the government took, uh, I believe, five billion US dollars in debt. They put it into a, some kind of SPV and that remained with the government. The, when the company was privatized, it was privatized without that seven billion. So there's no overhang that they have to deal with. If I can just add something on Sri Lankan Airlines, I think as uh, the airline itself has some issues with respect to like their fleet is outdated, so small, and then uh, s their engineering staff, they have, they have several shortages. So I think as a entity itself also, it's not attractive to uh, to buy to an investor. So, yeah. You know, we uh, we are talking about uh, all this um, mostly about more, more, more mostly about non-financial SOEs, but uh, the last year, for example, one of the SOE that made the biggest loss was the central bank. The central bank, the SOE that made the biggest loss. And uh, if you if you look at, for example, CPC, CPC made a 615 million loss, uh, out of which 527 was due to exchange loss, which is a uh, which is the uh, uh, policy of the central bank. So if you even if you 
and you are talking about airlines. For example, in India, when a few years ago when the exchange rate, uh, Indian exchange rate fell steeply, one of the uh, private airlines collapsed because their loans were in uh, uh, dollars and when the stabilization, they raised the interest rate, domestic demand collapsed. So, I mean, the, if you look, I mean, in Sri, we don't have history in Sri Lanka, but in India, the RBI was a private corporation, which was uh, nationalized. And uh, when the RBI was a private corporation, the, its product, the money that it made was uh, used widely throughout South Asia, in the Middle East, Dubai had Indian rupees. So, uh, the, so we don't talk about uh, uh, this uh, large big SOE, which makes uh, bad money and has a cascading effect on all these SOEs, uh, and even private corporations uh, are making losses. Uh, even if you privatize, you know, they'll find it uh, difficult to operate. So is there something that can be done to bring more accountability and uh, bring more stability to the, the country instead of having all these problems? For example, the last year, exchange losses of the five companies, CPC, Central Bank of Sri Lanka, Ceylon Electricity Board, and uh, Sri Lankan Airlines, so 1.3 trillion rupees, of which the Central Bank had a 610 million exchange loss. Uh, is there a general theoretical position, I, that's the best I can come up with, is that as <coughs> in countries like Taiwan and so on, as the country developed and the private sector got its act together, they exerted pressure, they exerted pressure on the government to, to manage the money supply and the exchange rates and general monetary stability because the implications were too strong too, too severe for them otherwise. <coughs> so that's a kind of hopeful theory. Uh, there's a man called uh, Mushtaq Khan, I think, London SOS, who says that over time that kind of thing will develop. <coughs> Some kind of counter pressure on the government to end its profligate behavior. But unless that develops, I don't know what the answer is. <coughs> uh, so Yes, maintaining the stability of the currency is the key thing. Now, if you look at our crisis today, right, and why people are suffering, the biggest part of it is not because of the government did, not because of, uh, uh, not because of anything. It, it is because the currency has been debased, right? Your savings are destroyed. Your incomes are destroyed because you have the same amount in the bank. You have the same amount in your fixed deposit. You have the same uh, salary but what it's buying is a lot less, right? So this is the poverty that uh, people face, right? On top of this, uh, uh, which was caused by, uh, by the printing of money. So you print more money and it's value debases. So, so that's your source of your poverty and your suffering. Now, in order to fix the public finances, the government has had to uh, remove uh, all the hidden subsidies that were there in the uh, in the in energy prices and raise taxes so you're paying what is effectively inflation tax plus government taxes right so which is why this burden is so heavy on people and why this is why people are suffering but so uh, so finding ways to uh, now the government is short on its revenue when you compare it with the IMF target so now is the solution to try to uh, tax even more and how much can you raise in taxes in a collapsing economy right so which is why you need to find other ways of fixing the uh, public finance and not print money again and 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 create more poverty and not increase more taxes which is why selling off uh, some of these assets uh, and uh, some of these unproductive um, uh, entities can bring in revenue and prevent you from uh, taxing even further because otherwise, uh, 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 otherwise uh, you'll have to, you know, because you missed your targets on the, on the revenue side. So, so the is the solution to try to tax even more from the people who have lost so much. The the biggest loss, of course, is from the from the uh, debasement of the currency. Uh, 
uh, have there been any conversations about the immediate social cost of uh, restructuring, such as like unemployment and things like that? Poverty levels at uh, 1990. The, you had 25% poverty in 1990, right? Uh, two years of mismanagement took you back 30 years, right? And uh, what has been lost through debasement can never be replaced again. However much you can recover to all assets, you might do whatever. That will help the public finances. They are not going to help the population whose savings and incomes have disappeared, right? All you can do is you can hope to try and work again and save and try to rebuild what you've lost through your own hard work, right? But uh, uh, but uh, you have gone back, 30 years of development has been reversed by blunders uh, over two years. Uh, if I understand the question. Yeah, I mean about, about, about like job losses and things. You're talking about SOE SOE restructured. being restructured and the resulting job losses. Yeah. Okay, so when I talk about it, I say, I can I use the example of SLT, uh, <coughs> which is something we, we have experience with. Or we can also go back to things like the um, Shell, when Shell came in, there were no job losses. In fact, the workers doubled their salaries. Uh, the workers who were at SLT doubled their salaries. Uh, they, had, uh, the, they had shares given free to them and so on. And there was a guarantee that for X number of years, I think it was two or five years, there would be no layoffs. But no layoffs policy was then activated in the form of a voluntary retirement package. And some people took the voluntary retirement package and left, right? So that's a different argument altogether. So that's the example that I give. Now, I, I do realize the, the weakness of this argument, right? Which is... The weakness is that Sri Lanka Telecom was able to, was in an extraordinarily, uh, it was an expanding market, right? They had so few telephones that in any year there were, it was a 50% increase even in fixed phones in that period, in the immediate post privatization period. Any year, 50% were new connections, right? So in such a situation, you can absorb the extra staff. Now you take saturated markets like electricity, where <coughs> due to various kinds of, well, due to union pressure, you had the meter readers all absorbed as permanent staff. They are making rather substantial salaries and they're reading meters where the, the bill those days was below 300 rupees. It completely doesn't make any sense, right? So one would argue that in an organization like CEB, when it's restructured, it cannot continue to employ these massive numbers of people as meter readers. Something will have to be done. Uh, that question has to be addressed, right? Yeah, so my that question, question is, like, is that, has that been discussed? Like, what can be done? Like, maybe like a VRS or something? Well, I have no, well that's generally what the government comes up with, is a, is a VRS kind of mm -hmm. solution, right? We have done VRSs for Mahaveli repeatedly, over and over again. We have, uh, we have tried to close down the Mahaveli authority and given VRS, except we give VRS, people go, then they come back and are re-employed. And then they get another VRS and they go and they come back again, right? So <laughs> there's a, a problem with VRSs also. But that is a general solution. I don't think even in India, with uh, with the India, they laid off people. So the question is, uh, in a number of these places, now, I don't think there'll be a big uh, unemployment problem in Sri Lankan. People are leaving anyway, right? People are taking jobs in other airlines. So it, their numbers will come down. Uh, those are things that uh, the privatization managers have to deal with. At a more macro level, I, sorry, I misunderstood your question. I thought you were asking about the crisis in general. No, what you have is this. Wha on one side, you have uh, what you're having is you're having to restructure state-owned enterprises. There's a lot of surplus staff in them because they, uh, that's where they've been packing up their political supporters. On the other side, because of migration, you have a lot of uh, uh, shortages of staff in, in other 
sectors of the economy. The question is how do you try to match it? So that's a tricky question. But um, uh, if processes are, uh, can be and, and the people are uh, capable and willing uh, for, for retraining and, and trying to move people into other areas because there are vacancies in various places and there are surplus uh, uh, employees in other places. So that's one. The other thing is to facilitate migration again by equipping people with skills uh, so that um, uh, that are in demand overseas. Again, uh, it's it's trading and uh, uh, I think Professor is probably far more conversant uh, on this. The so is, they're all EPF, ETF payers. They don't have this lifetime pensions, non-contributory lifetime pensions. So it's a little easier to handle in such situations than with the core business of government where the pensions are at stake. Thank you very much. Mang Hamodam Suthi Vantheno Ape Aradhane Piliyara Gena Madhya Sakachavar Sambandhu Nata Rehana Professor Samaraji Vasara Vita Suthi Vantheno Madhya Sakachavar Sambandhi Bagena Sa Api Hamodam Suthi Vantheno Nevatavara Kaping Prashnahala Me Madhya Sakachavar Avarane Kiri Mada Sambandhi Bagena Keti Sangrahaya Classical Lathe Noa Eliye Eyataradhi Sakachavar Isar Hatagini Anna Pulwang Ahan Bari Vichya Prashnathe Noa Ahan Pulwang Bohumatma Suthi